Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Mutsa. Get your education booklet in our daily newspaper, street sales, or at your school every Monday to Thursday for pre-primary up until grade three. The lessons are for listening or watching online. Inside the newspapers, there is an insert of the lesson booklet. Please cut the top of the lesson booklet with a pair of scissors and fold it for ready to use. But there is more. We are also available on our online platforms, MyZone and Zoshi Facebook pages, and in addition, our website, Zoshi Online. Hello boys and girls and welcome to my zone online school. My name is Teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today. Our theme this week has been my school and summer. Before we get into today's lesson, please boys and girls, may we sanitize. Now remember, we sanitize to be responsible. So you rub inside and around your hands as well. This ensures that we are doing everything we can to stay safe and far away from coronavirus. Well done. For today's lesson, we will be talking about story sums, measurement, and geometry. For our first exercise today, please turn to page 28. On page 28, we have some problem solving and these are going to come in the form of story sums. Now we are going to read each one and not exactly each one. <laughs> you are going to read each one, but we are going to do one and four together. So let us take a look at number one. Number one says, teacher bought 27 ice creams for her class. 13 of the ice creams melted. How many are left? Now it looks like we are going to be subtracting. So the first number we are going to write is 27 and then we say minus or take away or subtract 13 so it is 27 minus 13 the rest of that one I'm sure you can do by yourselves and you can tell us how many ice creams are left let's move on to number four number four says there are seven days in a week. Linda goes for swimming on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. How many days does Linda skip swimming? Now, this one is very interesting because we are told the days that Linda goes swimming. We know that she goes on Mondays. Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. So that means the days of the week that she does not go for swimming are Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. So we have Monday she goes for swimming, and then Tuesday she does not go for swimming. Wednesdays she goes for swimming and then Thursday she does not go for swimming. Friday and Saturday she goes for swimming and then Sunday she does not go for swimming. So you are going to write those days down, the ones that she skips. 
skips swimming. Please make sure that you read the story at least three times before you answer them. Some of them are adding, others are subtraction. So you need to be very careful with the words that are used. Take your time and we will be right back after this short advert break. Do you have children in the age range of five to six years and want to participate in our school booklet program? Please contact us on 81 and we will put you on our distribution list for the attention of pre-primary schools. Topics include family, summer, culture, traditions and houses, transport and communications, occupations, autumn and more. We distribute countrywide in over seven different languages. For our first exercise for this part is page 29. So for this part, we are going to be doing measurement. In this case, we are dealing with mass. Now mass is how heavy or light something is. So when we are measuring, there are two units of measurement that we use. We either say kilograms, which is represented by kg, or grams, which is represented by g. The first thing you need to know, boys and girls, is that grams are more. When there are many, many, many grams, it turns into kilograms. So the heavier one is kilograms and the lighter one is grams. Let's take a look at the weight here. We have two questions that are asking us about these three people. Now we have children and we are told how much they weigh, how much they measure or rather what is their mass. Sam is 12 kgs, kilograms. Anne is 20 kilograms. And Jimmy is 12 kilograms. Number one is saying, write the names of the children from the lightest one to the heaviest. Now you can see from the numbers which ones you're going to write first. Remember, light, which means that it's not that heavy, and then heavy, which means it's not that light. <laughs> so you're going to do number one. Number two is saying, write the mass of the children from the heaviest to the lightest. Now you need to write the actual numbers. The first one wanted names. And the second, number two, wants the numbers, the mass. So you're going to write them starting with the heaviest. And then you move on to the lightest. Number three is where I will be helping you. Now we've all seen these things before. A feather, a car, and a slice of bread. It is going to be your job to find out what you're going to be measuring with. Is it kilograms or is it grams? So we need to first tell each other that kilograms are very heavy and grams are not so heavy. So if you are going to say a feather can be measured in kilograms, wow, that is very heavy. So I would say a feather is in grams. So we are going to go and continue. You will do B and C by yourselves. Now, before we continue, we need to remember that one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. 
That is going to be very important for you to remember what to do for number four. So we have even written it on the board. We have said one kilo, one, a thousand grams. <laughs> a thousand grams equals one kilogram. So even if you have a lot of grams, if they don't get up to a thousand, then they don't reach up to one kilogram. So I would need a thousand grams in this hand so that they can reach the same level as one kilogram. That is what we mean when we say a thousand grams is equal to one kilogram. Now, let us take a look at number four. Number four, we are going to use that knowledge to fill in the missing parts. So if four kilograms are there, then how many grams are we going to have? What is it equal to? Remember, one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. Then you are going to fill in the rest by yourselves. Take your time, use your maths, and if you get stuck, you can always ask for help from your teachers or the parent at home. Let us now go to page 30. On page 30, we are now moving on to geometry. And geometry is so much fun. This is when we talk about shapes. And in this case, we have now moved from 2D shapes and included 3D shapes. So we first need to know our 2D shapes. It says, make use of the names in the blocks to name the 2D and 3D shapes. Color the 2D shapes blue and the 3D shapes red. So first you are going to name each one. We are going to start with number one. Number one is a sphere. Sphere. The word sphere is in the bottom there and you can see that it is S P H E R E sphere. So please write the name of that shape. Then the next one, we are going to count the sides and the corners. One, two, three, four, five. So remember what we said five was, and five means penta. So the next shape for number two is a pentagon. It starts with the letter P. Please write the word pentagon. The next shape that we can see seems to be sort of a box shape, but this one has a special name. You are going to look for that name and you're going to look for the rest of the names. Please start with the 2D shapes because we already know the names of those 2D shapes. Write them down and then you're going to color them blue. The rest of the shapes, my dear children, you are going to color them red. Try and label them as well so that you'll be able to get the correct answer. Have fun and take your time. Make sure that if you're not sure, you ask a parent or an adult or a teacher to check your work. We will see you just now after the short advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi.
We have now come to the end of our lesson. And remember, boys and girls, when we are dealing with shapes, it's good to know their names so that you can actually see them all over the world, everywhere you go. Now that we are done, it is time for us to sanitize. So I'd like you to take your sanitizer and rub your hands. Remember, when we sanitize, we are showing the world that we are responsible boys and girls. There we go. I wonder today though, I have not seen Zoshi for a long time. I think he's up to something. Zoshi, where are you? Oh, there he is. Oh, thank you, Zoshi. You brought me some water? Oh, you are so sweet, Sashi. What? what? Sashi, put that down. Oh. <laughs> so, from Sashi and I, it's time to say thank you so much and goodbye. <laughs>